the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Though people may be joining us from many regions, we acknowledge that the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields stands on occupied land, the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat and Petun nations, land covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant. We acknowledge that we have broken the treaties. We acknowledge the damage done by colonialism and the role that our church has played in this. And we pledge ourselves to work for a future of justice and reconciliation. We have come at Christ's own bidding to this high and holy place where we wait with hope and longing for some token of God's grace. Here we pray for new assurance that our faith is not in vain. Searching like those first disciples for a sign both clear and plain. Light breaks in upon our darkness, splendor bathes the flesh joined word. Moses and Elijah marvel as the heavenly voices heard. Eyes and hearts behold with wonder how the law and the prophets beat. Moist with garments stirred in brightness, stands transfigured and complete. Strengthened by this glimpse of glory, fearful lest our faith decline. We, like Peter, find it tempting to remain and build a shrine. But true worship gives us courage to proclaim what we profess, that our daily lives may prove us people of the God we bless. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, peace everybody. Peace, peace, peace everybody. Good morning, peace, everybody. Good morning everyone. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God. Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, 
you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, God, on the holy mount you revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world and change us into the, his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal, Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you, not, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elisha said to him, Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the, jo to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you will see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could, not, could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God 
God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame around about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above. to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause. For God himself is judge. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it, for it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 This is my beloved son in whom I Listen to him. be with you and also with you the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to mark glory to you lord jesus christ six days later jesus took with him peter and james and john and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves and he transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud out overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of God had risen from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The theme of light weaves its way through the season of Epiphany. Light growing as we leave the winter solstice behind, the light of the star which leads the Magi, the light of the candles we bless at Candlemas, the light to lighten the Gentiles held in the arms of the aged Simeon. Finally, with the season drawing to a close and Lent approaching, today's gospel shows us the ultimate uncreated radiance, the outward manifestation of the glory of God. Six days after telling his uncomprehending disciples of the passion and suffering to come, Jesus takes the three who in Mark's gospel usually constitute his inner circle to a mountaintop where they are shown a vision of him in the full glory of his divine nature, dazzling and remote. Accompanying him suddenly are Moses and Elijah, the two great figures of Jewish tradition. There is something I think which the Gospel of Mark does more effectively than the others. It immerses us in the incomprehension of the disciples. Even though we know how the story goes on, Mark's Gospel takes us right back into the confusion of Peter and the others about the significance of the events which seem to be picking them up and carrying them along. Mark's account of the transfiguration is a prime example of this. The three chosen disciples probably expected some kind of confidential instruction, some practical insight into the events which were to come in the days ahead. And instead, they saw Jesus in a way they had never seen him before. They were terrified. In fact, the orthodox icon of the transfiguration shows them either cowering in awe or in many versions of the image, actually falling backwards down the mountain in their fear and amazement. Peter stammered out something about honoring Jesus, Elijah and Moses by erecting tents or booths as if they could somehow dwell permanently in the glory of that moment. The only answer he got was the voice of God saying, this is my son, listen to him. But what does Jesus tell them when the vision has faded? Keep this to yourselves for the time being. After his resurrection, they will remember and begin to understand and then they will be able to share what they have seen. Of course, our lectionary heightens the effect of the disciples' confusion by giving us the story of Elisha as a contrast. Elijah doesn't invite Elisha to come with him. In fact, he tries to send him back. But Elisha takes the initiative. He seems to know exactly what's going on. He asks for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, and he has witnesses who can confirm him as Elijah's designated successor. Peter, James, and John have only their shared recollections and their shared astonishment at the dazzling light, which came and then faded away. Their lives cannot yet be fully transformed. There must be a time of waiting. We and the whole world have been experiencing a year of waiting for answers, for a vaccine, for healing, for justice. In the season of Christmas and Epiphany, we have sought hope and comfort in the full and simple glories of the incarnation. Now, as we enter into a different, more deliberate season of waiting, we must step back for a time. Like those first disciples, we cannot jump directly to Easter, but need a time of transition, a time when we learn the cost of discipleship. It is fitting that we follow the transfiguration of Christ with a small disfigurement of ourselves, the sign of ashes. We mark ourselves with the leavings of fire, what remains 
after light and heat have gone, no longer energy, but bare matter. We come down from the mountaintop and follow Jesus into the small places, the mad and broken and hungry places to learn what he does, how gently he deals with hearts suspended between belief and unbelief, how love acts in the world. We hold the glory in our hearts for strength and for comfort and to remind one another of what has been and what is to come. And in time, we recognize that the icon of the transfiguration and the icon of the crucifixion are the same form as intimately related as the positive and negative images of a photograph. Moses and Elijah replaced by two thieves, fellow criminals with Jesus in the eyes of the powerful. The glory of the transfiguration, the Shekinah of the living God shines through the cross, although the eyes of the body cannot see it. Together, we make this discovery afresh every year as a sign that our growth into the life of God is a process which never stops, that we are always being called to transformation, each of us in ourselves and together as the body of Christ. Paul writes to the Corinthians, it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And we are called to hold that light for one another. As Peter and James and John needed one another's memories of what had happened on the mountaintop, and witnessed together to the rest of their community and to us. So we are called to strengthen one another in the good news when it is hard to remember or believe and to witness to our own experience of the presence of God as we seek to bring the light of transformation into the dark, cold places of the world. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy God, 
you have revealed the glory of your love in Jesus Christ and have given us a share in your spirit. May we who listen to Christ follow faithfully and in the dark places where you send us, reveal the light of your gospel. In response to the bidding, Holy God, transform us. Please respond with and use us to your glory. And use us to your glory. Today we are between the seasons of Epiphany and Lent and we think about the joy of your appearing and the horror of your undoing at the hands of those who would not or could not embrace your way of life. We pray for stronger faith and courage to live up to our calling. We pray for the grace to act always with the generosity of spirit you show to us until the whole church models the wisdom which the world often counts as foolishness. We give thanks for those who have followed your call to be leaders and teachers of your word to us and ask your blessing on their lives, their wisdom, and their families. For Bishop Andrew, Bishop Jenny, Mother Maggie, Mother Andrea, and Deacon Elizabeth, we give thanks for the work and dedication to uphold your laws and values and set an example for all with whom they come in contact and by the work that they do to improve their lives. In the Anglican Church cycle of prayer for Canada, we pray for the bishop, the people and clergy of the diocese of Eastern Newfoundland and Labrador. In our diocese for the Bishop's Committee on Intercultural Ministry. In the Evangelical Lutheran cycle in Canada for the Dean, Council and Congregations of the Central Toronto Area and Greater Toronto Area East and West of the Eastern Synod. For the outreach and advocacy work of Holy Trinity Thornhill, its support of food banks in Richmond Hill, All Saints Kitchen and Clothing Depot, and Eva's Place, its refugee sponsorship and its parish nurse ministry. For Holy Trinity, Trinity Square, its daily meal program, offering food, hygiene, and harm reduction supplies, encampment support, shelter and housing advocacy, its homeless memorial, refugee sponsorship and advocacy, its partnership with Toronto Urban Native Ministry and Trinity Square Cafe, and for the Church of the Incarnation, its support of local food banks, the North Yorkers for Disabled Persons Group Home, Flemington Park Ministry, the Pekangagum Work Water Project, monthly seniors lunch and community garden and in the worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer for the Anglican Church in Canada. May their work be an inspiration to us all. Holy God, transform us. And use us to your glory. Perhaps we, like Peter, James, and John, await for your appearing in dazzling light and unmistakable clarity. We are in need of a glimpse of Jesus, who is the way through the mix and mess of this life. We want to pray about all the unresolved issues in our world. We pray for all people living in areas of conflict, where each day brings the uncertainty of life, death, of loved ones lost or injured, of homelands left behind or closed borders to once thought of as safe countries, of religious, gender, racial, or political persecution of the disregard for the laws you gave us by which to live. Where once we used to be able to identify specific countries, we now pray for all countries in our world. We pray for our good earth suffering the effects of our neglect and misuse, where climate change has resulted in avalanches, brutal winter, winter storms, and confusion amongst its beloved creatures. Remind us to take what we need and no more. Encourage us in a cultural, a countercultural faithfulness that is not about consumerism. Spur us with new insight and deeper understanding that we may live mindfully each day, conscious of the impact we, of what we do and fail to do. We ask you to give us your desire for peace, your spirit of discernment, your understanding of unspoken needs and your capacity for forgiveness. We ask that you urge us to act 
with common sense, commitment, and courage. Holy God, transform us. And use us to your glory. Lord, we want to pray for the homes and families we represent and for all with whom we live and work. In our parish family, we pray for Leila Regezi, Dominique Russell, Emma Bruno, and Luca Russell Trioni, Fortunato Trioni, Sarah Eric Sackville McLaughlin, Beck Schaefer, Autumn Shim, Joan Taylor, Esther Townsend, Francilla Tonga, Anthony Van Zant, and Bob Warner. Help us to recognize the opportunities for generous, loving spirit and take away any destructive possessiveness or self-interest. Holy God, transform us. And use us to your glory. Lord, we pray for peace of mind and spirit in all those who are distressed and enveloped in pain, for all who live on the margins of society, in financial crisis, in precarious or no housing whatsoever, the unwaged, the neglected and shunned, those needing the love and companionship of other human beings and those who have suffered violent acts upon them. This week healing prayers are asked for Phyllis, Vanesta, Becky, Mark, Alex, Taja, Damien, Tanis, Beck, Lovina, Michael, Victor, Mary, Kadim, Allison, John, Kim, Marvin, Ed, Roy, Andrew, Leone, Dave, Margaret and Gary, Sue Ann, Janet, Terry, Danette, Steve, Jean, Alicia, Georgina, Aiden, Sharon, Sean, Etienne, Dan, Jan, and Mother Maggie. May they know the reality of your inner healing. We give thanks to the staff and doctors of Toronto Western Hospital for delivering Mother Maggie to us in good working order after her emergency appendectomy. Perhaps, and may even in the worst situations become places of growth and new life. Holy God, transform us. And use us to your glory. We pray for those approaching death with fear and resentment and anger. We give thanks for all first responders, doctors, nurses, personal support workers, medical researchers, outreach workers, for all who counsel the dying and bereaved, the hospital chaplains and other clergy. We pray for vaccines to be forthcoming to the to end the devastation and suffering from COVID-19 and its variants. We pray for those who have, who have died. We pray for the, that those who have died will know the joy of everlasting life with you, remembering those who have died and those whose memorials fall at this time. And in this Black History Month, we remember Martin Luther King Jr., Nance, Nelson Mandela, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. Rest eternal, grant unto them. And may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We give thanks for the good news that unfolds in the world as people dream your dreams, follow your nudging, and seek you in the faces they meet each day. Perhaps, O oh God, it is on the only transfiguration we really need as you draw us to the rhythm of Lent, unfolding in our midst. We accept your sacred invitation to explore the corners of our soul. Open us to your light that we may see ourselves clearly with all our fears and faults and faith, with all our desires and dreams and duties. Help us to see our journey as a place of your appearing, that like Peter, James, and John, we may come down from the mountain and set foot in front of one foot in front of the other in your name and for your sake we ask this through Christ our Lord amen
It is good, Lord, to be here. Thy glory fills the night. Thy face and garments like the sun shine with unborrowed light. It is good, Lord, to be here. Thy beauty to behold where Moses and Elijah stand thy messengers of old fulfiller of the past promise of things to be we have thy body glory of death we see thy kingdom come oh might we hold the vision bright and make this hill our home tis good lord for to be here yet we Since thou bidst us leave the mount, come with us to the plain. Holy God, receive all we offer you this day and bring us to that radiant glory which we see in the transfigured face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of salvation in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, We give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary 
and to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have 
Let us pray. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers of this table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. We ask this in his name. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you, everybody. Um, I think you all heard, if you didn't hear before the service, you heard in the intercessions. I am joining you from my bed after an emergency appendectomy and a few days in the hospital. So I really 
want to extend my great thanks to the whole team who stepped up and made sure that this service still happened, um, especially Andrea and Janet, um, Catherine and Elizabeth. Um, I also really need to thank the people who moved e even more quickly to make sure that the Friday dinner and the Saturday and Sunday breakfasts continued uh, uninterrupted, which was a pretty big task. Um, again, Andrea and Janet and Elizabeth. Um, a couple of people who aren't members of the congregation, but I need to thank them here, uh, Anna Eisner and Jesse Cobb. They are regular outreach volunteers and they really, really pitched in over the last week. So my gratitude to everyone. I have to keep the announcements brief because um, <clears throat> my throat's still swollen from the tube they had to put down it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, of course, Ash Wednesday is coming up very soon. I do anticipate being well enough to celebrate at that service, which will be Wednesday at 7 p.m. I don't think the Zoom link exists yet, although I could be wrong, but it will be sent out very shortly. In any case, it will be on Zoom as usual and echoed on, on Facebook and YouTube. So that's Wednesday at 7 p.m. I think that many of you have received your chalk pencils or bags of ashes or will soon, and others have expressed the intention to make your own ashes. And uh, we, will, we will enter Lent together under unusual conditions. Sunday, Jan February 28th, will be our annual vestry meeting. It will be immediately after the Sunday service, so you just need to stay on Zoom or on the call. And uh, the vestry list is on the website for people to check and make sure you're there. I actually apparently forgot to put Martin on the vestry list, and he's a deputy warden, so it's definitely worth checking. Um, he's on now. Uh, and uh, later that afternoon, of course, is the Diocesan Black History Month service, which is on Zoom, and you should be able to get information about how to how to log into that on the Diocesan website. Um, I think that's <clears throat> both everything I have to say and about everything that my throat can handle for now, so I will hand over to Adonica. Many thanks and blessings to Mother Andrea, Mother Maggie, Deacon Elizabeth, to our wardens, Catherine, Leroy, Martin, and Brent, to our choir, musicians, uh, readers, and intercessor, and all those who contributed to the service today, including Zoe and Esther, Sarah, Janet, Hugh, Sue Ann, Annette, and Elise. To those who attend on all of our platforms, um, and especially those who are new to St. Stephen's, uh, a huge welcome. Um, and big encouragement to join us live on Zoom so that you can remain with us after the postlude uh, with your tea or coffee and join us for casual conversation on a range of fun and uh, interesting topics for as short or as long a time as you're able. Thank you all.